Hey, what's up? This is Justin Prime, live from the studio in Amsterdam. Today, I'm gonna show you guys my track Cannonball, which I collaborated with Showtech. Well, I started off playing the piano when I was five years old. My grandfather teach me how to play the piano, uh, taught me how to play the piano, and um, uh, from there on, uh, actually, I only played the piano till the age of 14. And then I went to my best friend's uh, place and he invited me and he said, yo, man, I got these sick Pioneer CDE players and uh, or actually they were not they were not called CDEs back then, I think. I'm not sure, but they were Pioneer uh, CD players and a mixer. And I was like, what's this? And he showed me and I asked him, like, can I can I can I? Uh, fool around with it and after 10 minutes I was hooked for life. Not long after that, I think one year later I started to play around with uh, Fruity Loops. I downloaded uh, Fruity Loops and uh, I, um, I worked with it for like one year and then I switched to Reason and eventually I switched over to Cubase at the age of, I think at the age of 16 and um, that's when uh, things were getting really serious because uh, I was really um, starting to produce my own music and I was getting better and better. And uh, at the age of 18, I got my first record deal. Uh, it was on the small hardstyle label. I was a hardstyle artist for like, I think like eight years or something. Until um, 2011, and I was a little bit sick about making hardstyle for almost 10 years and then I switched over to EDM and um, that's what I'm doing right now. So I used to work on a Windows computer, Windows XP for like, I don't know, a lot of years. And um, so that's why I use Cubase uh, because um, after I used Fruity Loops, uh, which I didn't really like, I didn't like the sequencer. Um, uh, I switched over to Reason and after working with it for like a year, I, um, I didn't really like the sound quality. The other producer I knew from the hardstyle scene, he, uh, he showed me Cubase and that you were able to use VSTI plugins. And I was like, dude, this sounds amazing. So that for me, that was a reason uh, by itself to, to use Steinberg, uh, Steinberg's Cubase. So I started with Cubase 3 and now I'm on Cubase 8. Three years ago, uh, I had to go to LA to work for um, Paul Oakenfold and um, show that told me like, how are you gonna work over there? I said, well, I, I'm just gonna take my USB stick with me and my dongle and that's that's it. And he was like, you don't have a, you don't have a MacBook or, or something like that. And I was like, uh, no, why? They have a studio over there, right? And he was like, dude, you have to buy one and i was like all right i'm gonna buy a, i'm gonna buy a laptop and he was like listen you have to buy a macbook if you if you don't like it i'm gonna pay 50 percent of your macbook back so i was like all right you're that convinced <laughs> start with um, I want to start with uh, to show you guys how I made uh, the melody uh, I got a lot of reactions about it in the past and uh, people ask me how I made the melody well it's built uh, it's built up uh, uh, on shorts so I'm gonna show the MIDI file today and I'm gonna show you how I made the cannibal voice and I actually uh, re-recorded my own voice uh, yesterday because the original uh, cannonball uh, vocal is my voice. And I did it again yesterday, and then we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you quickly from scratch uh, how um, uh, I'm gonna build up the vocal. So there we go. The melody line is actually pretty simple. Let me see, it starts here. It starts, um, it's built up from three layers. It's a massive synthesizer, um, which actually is pretty basic. I used uh, three oscillators, um, a pulse saw for the first, second, and third oscillator. And on the second and third, I uh, detuned it just a little bit. Got some reverb on basic uh, EQing, and I start with the cutoff uh, with the uh, 
the cutoff filter on zero and then when the, the brake comes up, uh, I'm gonna open it to 100%. This is actually the basic background short. Um, it consists of three layer, um, three notes, one short. When I play live piano, I record it because you want to have that feeling. Um, you can't really, um, in my opinion, uh, play piano for a song and just write it in your. Um, in your editor, in your pattern editor, because you will never get a feeling with the velocity. Um, but when you play a synthesizer, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'll show you. For example, when I play a piano, the velocity will be something like this. So as you can see here, um, the notes are a little bit uh, purple, blue, and that means uh, if they're less red, then you played it with, like, with um, you played it more softer. While when it's red, you played it like, you know, like really hard. And you can't really hear it here with the synthesizer, so it doesn't really matter if you do it with a VSTI. But um, when you uh, play piano, it's really necessary. I load in the synthesizer, or mostly of the time, I actually start with the piano. And then uh, I'm just playing some shorts and see what works and then layered it on top with another, uh, in this case, a short melody. Uh, but sometimes I just play a second part like this, just with one finger. And um, it all depends, but I, I always play with the keyboard. So, um, so that's the second part, or the first part. Then I copied, um, I copied the same notes with, uh, to the piano. Let me show you. This is the same short, but I added uh, two lower notes for the bass. And why did I do this? Because if I play it's all about layering your sounds. If I just use the standard massive sound, you get something like this. Now when I layer this with a piano, you get that full uh, bottom body, which you actually want to, to warm up your sound. So that's that. Um, for the piano, I actually used the preset on, on Nexus. I love to use uh, Nexus a lot for my piano sounds. Uh, I think Nexus has a lot of great piano sounds. And um, to top it off, the third layer is, um, is made with a Firus TI2. This one, I love this little box. Uh, it's my, my favorite synthesizer. I used it a lot to make uh, hardstyle music in the past. And uh, it's perfect for EDM or for trance. It has that really harsh metallic sound. Um, and also has a great uh, way of distorting your, your lead sounds. Uh, it's also great for screeches. And in my opinion, it's... Um, it's, it's one of my favorite synthesizers, and I haven't found a synthesizer yet which can compete against the metallic kind of sound which the Access Virus has. In Cubase, you can go to, this is Cubase 8. I'll show you, you click on this button, add track instrument, VSTI instrument, and you, first you have to, uh, it's, it's, it works with USB actually, and you just plug it in into your computer and um, you install um, the, the driver software for the access virus. And it will just load into your Cubase. So then you can go to the bar here, the VST bar. So press this button, this window will pop up. You click on no VST instrument and you can just load in your virus TI and click on add track. And it says no Fire connected, but that, that's because I already have 
one connected, and that's this one. You can only use it once. As you can hear, it's a lot more rougher, metallic kind of sound uh, if you compare it to the massive sound, which is, in my opinion, a little bit, I would, I would say, sweet slash soft, so. You can hear the richness and the metallic character um, and the warm character that the virus has that, in my opinion, not all VST have right now. So yeah, I just added that on top for the piano and the bottom ones. Uh, let me see, the Massive and the piano, they work perfectly together. It's just copying, copying chords. But then when you add the second layer, I just copied the Massive, um, the Massive chords, I'm gonna pass it over here. Well, now if you look to the charts, you can see that for the Virus Ti, I use two notes instead of three notes because the Virus Ti is so thick and if you add three notes, it's gonna be a problem later on. It's gonna be all messy. Because if you look here, you can see I already used Oscillator 3 and I pitched it down 12 semitones. So this one already has uh, a big bottom. So you don't need to use three notes, just two, that's perfect. Just one little thing I wanted to show you is that when uh, this is the massive uh, melody layer, when it goes down, I'm playing the same um, pattern on top, but I'm going up with the notes while the massive is going down, the virus is going up, but it all has the same, it's played the same way, as you can see. The black ones, you can see this. It's playing the same way, but only changing the notes, and that's how you get that really rich harmonic sound which Cannonball has. All right, now I'm gonna show you how it sounds all together. When it was 2011, um, it wasn't called, in my opinion, it wasn't called EDM yet. There was like, I listened to some songs, it was still Electro House, called Electro House, Progressive House. Um, then later on they made like a, one big name for all the genres, they called it EDM. But when I came in, everything was still soft and um, then I started to, to make Progressive House and after a few months I was like, hey, what if I make a track uh, with a hardstyle kick, but instead making it around 150 BPM, I'm gonna do it around 128 or 125. And that's how Cannonball was born. It was like my, my uh, history of hardstyle. I actually took it into the electro house scene. And back then there was only one guy who made a song like that. Uh, it was called, he was called Sand Sandro Silva with Quintino and they made Epic. And we were the second ones who came with uh, with Cannonball, and it actually worked. And after that, the whole scene blew up, and everybody was making tracks like that. Cannonball was back then; it was still called Drop It. Uh, I started off making um, the project here; it was just actually just for fun, um, and I didn't really knew what to do with it because back then, it f for me it, it it was still like a fresh sounding track and I I no nobody was making music like that I think back then. So I sent it over to them because I already knew Shodek for like six years back then from the hardstyle scene. And I asked him like, yo dudes, you guys are playing uh, EDM, Electro House, whatever now. Um, can you check out my track and maybe try to play it in a club or something and uh, let me know uh, how it works. 
And uh, the next day they called me like, well, dude, this is crazy. You want to do the collab together? I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. So I took all the outtakes, uh, all the stems from my studio to their studio near Eindhoven City. And we worked uh, on that track over there in, uh, for uh, a day or two. Yeah, that's how it happened. Second part, I'm going to show you guys um, how I made the Cannonball vocal. And um, I recorded, uh, it's actually my own voice, like I mentioned before. And I recorded another version of my voice yesterday. And it sounds really funny, but so don't laugh. You guys are probably going to laugh your ass off back home. But it sounds like this. This is how I started. Show us what you got when the motherfucking beat drops. This is what I actually recorded yesterday. And when I copy that to another uh, track, it sounds like this. Show us what you got when the motherfucking beat drops. I copied it to the, the vocal, uh, another vocal uh, track, which has all the inserts included, which I used to make the, the vocal. Um, I press on inserts on the left of, Q, of your Cubase window and here you can see um, all the inserts I used to make the vocal. Actually this, the first, uh, vocal, uh, the first f uh, effect is from um, Steinberg Cubase itself. It's the amp simulator, well this is a distortion plugin and actually nothing really big is going on here. Um, I turned off the the speaker cabinet and just left the, equal, uh, the equalizer on the basic stuff, uh, basic preset. So I'm putting on distortion now. Show us what you got when the motherfucking beat drops. Now it's getting just a little bit of distortion, nothing really big going on, it's just going through the, the Steinberg amp simulator. Now I'm turning on the limiter. what you got when the motherfucking beat drops okay why i did this is um, i just wanted to cut off uh, the peaks of um, the vocal as you can see while i process it it's what you got when the motherfucking beat drops as you can see it's um, cutting off all the peaks Normally, uh, it's not done. For example, if you do this with a, a vocal from Rita Ora or Iggy C, they're not going to be really happy with you. But um, the, the, the vocal is going to be distorted. I already know uh, the end result, so I know it's going to be distorted. So uh, limiting it will not affect it at all because the vocal itself will be distorted at the end. So I just cut it off. Um, I'm using the Waves um, L1. Limiter, it's a really old one, but it works fine. Then I turn on the pitch correct from Steinberg and I pitch down. It's actually like a sort of folk, like an um, auto tune kind of, of um, uh, VST. I use the transpose to go down for 12 semitones and um, I just leave this on the chromatic and then. Show us what you got when the motherfucking beat drops. Then you get a sound like this already. Then I turn on the VEQ4, VEQ4 um, equalizer, it's also from Waves. And it's actually, it's like a vintage equalizer, uh, which I like to use a lot on vocals and on bass lines. Um, it's, um, it's also a dangerous equalizer because it will really thin out your, um, uh, your audio file, but at the same time it will give you that really uh, uh, good richness to your vocal or bass line. So I turn that on and you can hear the difference. Show us what you got when the Show us what you got when the motherfucking So yeah, I'm just cutting off everything under the 80 hertz and adding some high end and a little boost around uh, one and a half uh, kilohertz. That's all actually. But now I just lost some some punch uh, or some thump in my opinion. So I added the UAD uh, Oxford inflator. Nothing really big is going on. Uh, everything is on zero. I have the, the seri zero uh, dB clip um, uh, protector on and I'm just adding a little bit of effect around 20% to get the presence back. What's what you got when the motherfucking beat drops? 
can't really hear it like this, but you will hear it in the mix. Um, and then I used the ultra pitch three voice in between. Show us what you got when the motherfucking beat drops. It makes it even more a little bit weirder than it already is. Uh, it just spreads a little bit, it triples the voices. And then um, I use the R compressor to, um, to compress the vocal and um, the threshold is around uh, 9.8 dB, uh, the makeup gain around 2.5. Uh, I set the ratio around four. Some people might think that's too much. Uh, some don't. Uh, some don't. I think in between 1.5 or four is okay. It works for this vocal. So now I'm going back to the original process vocal. What I do now is I select it, I double click it, and now a uh, sort of Melodyne kind of window opens. It's actually built in in Steinberg's Cubase. And um, what I do now is these notes were actually up. Let me see. It's now on F2. Originally, they were up on F3. That's my original voice. So when I select all the notes and get them down to from F3 to F2, they're 12 semitones down and I will have a, a lower voice, but Melodyne makes sure that it doesn't sound really pitched, but still you can still recognize what I'm saying. I use the straight and pitch function to flat out all the notes, as you can see. It flats out all the notes and now it sounds like a real robot. And now I can just make a like a sort of melody with uh, my vocal and I can even um, put it on, like sing a song and put it on top of, a, of a, a, a drop and just play it as a melody. For example, now the vocal sounds like Show us what you got when the motherfucking beat drops. But I can also like change the notes like Put this to the top, and now it sounds like. Show us what you got when the motherfucking beat. Show us what you got when the motherfucking beat drops. So now you can play along with it like a, some sort of melody, as long as you don't forget to pitch it down 12 semitones um, to get that really like robo kind of voice that I have. So this is how it sounds now, based on this vocal. Show us what you got when the motherfucking beat drops. And then I add a little bit of cowbell to it too. Can never, never have enough cowbell, cowbell in my opinion. And then you get this. Show us what you got when the motherfucking beat drops. And then the original cannonball voice. I uh, copied it and made it a stereo because this is a, a, a mono uh, a mono recording and I spent a little bit more time on um, the vocal recording um, for the original Cannonball uh, track. I think I re-recorded it for like 50 times to get the perfect um, the perfect uh, vocal to use with the Melodyne and the pitch correction function in Cubase. The original sounds like this. Tell us what you got when the motherfucking beat drops. And we just made this today. Tell us what you got when the motherfucking beat drops. Almost sounds the same. So, here you go. This is what I wanted to show you today. I showed you how I made the Cannonball um, melody. It actually consists of three layers, a piano, a massive and a virus tie to top it off. And um, I showed you how to make the cannonball vocal. So. Tell us what you got when the motherfucking beat drops. <laughs>